Hello, and welcome to the 12-hour prayer marathon offered by the Chicago Archdiocesan Vocation Association, otherwise known as CABA. My name is Sister Lavina Francis Pamet, Franciscan Sister of the Sacred Heart and Coordinator of Religious Vocations Ministries in the Archdiocese of Chicago. Thank you so much for joining us in prayer today. May God bless you and give you peace. Good morning. Thank you for joining us at Kaaba today for our prayer marathon. My name is Sister Michelle, a sister of the Holy Family of Nazareth, and I'm happy to share with you this morning our morning prayer, Liturgy of the Hours, uh, prayed by our sisters and postulants in Grand Prairie, Texas. Thank you for praying with us. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Christ picked and employed us sins of men. Sinners may return to you. O 
O rescue me, God, my helper, and my tongue shall bring out your goodness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. For in sacrifice you take no delight, burnt offering from me you would refuse. My sacrifice, a contrite spirit, a humble, contrite heart, you will not spurn. In your goodness show favor to Zion, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with lawful sacrifice. Holocaust offer on your altar. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, you will accept the true sacrifice offered on your altar. Father, he who knew no sin was made sin for us, to save us and restore us to your friendship. Look upon our contrite heart and afflicted spirit, and heal our troubled conscience, so that in the joy and strength of the Holy Spirit, we may proclaim your praise and glory before all the nations. All the descendants of Israel will glory in the Lord's gift of victory. Truly with you, God is hidden. The God of Israel, the Savior, those are put to shame and disgrace, who vent their anger against him, those go in disgrace, who carve images. Israel, you are saved by the Lord. Save forever. You shall never be put to shame or disgrace in future ages. For thus says the Lord, the Creator of the heavens, who is God, the designer and maker of the earth, who established it, not creating it to be a waste, but designing it to be lived in. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I have not spoken from hiding, nor from some dark place of the earth. And I have not said to the descendants of Jacob, Look for me in an empty waste. I, the Lord, promise justice. I foretell what is right. Come and assemble, gather together. You fugitives from among the Gentiles, they are without knowledge who bear wooden idols and pray to gods that cannot save. Come here and declare in council together who announced this from the beginning and foretold it from of old. Was it not I, the Lord? Besides whom there is no other God, there is no just and saving God but me. Turn to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God, there is no other. By myself I swear, uttering my just decree and my unalterable word, to me every knee shall bend, by me every tongue shall swear, saying only in the Lord are just deeds and power. Before him in shame shall come all who bend their anger against him. In the Lord shall be the vindication and the glory of all the descendants of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All the descendants of Israel will glory in the Lord's gift of victory. 
Let us go into God's presence, singing for joy. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing for joy. Know that he, the Lord, is God. He made us, we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Go within his gates, giving thanks. Enter his courts with songs of praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Indeed, how good is the Lord. Eternal is merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us go into God's presence, singing for joy. With joy and gladness, we cry out to you, Lord, and ask you, open our hearts to sing your praises and announce your goodness and truth. From Isaiah 52. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond that of man, and his appearance beyond that of mortals. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. God himself will set me free from the hunter's snare. God himself will set me free from the hunter's snare. From those who would trap me with lying words. And from Understand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. God himself will set me free from the hunter's snare. The Lord said, I have done you many acts of kindness. For which of them do you want to kill me? Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised to all that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord said, I have done you many acts of kindness, 
For which of them do you want to kill me? Thanks be to Christ the Lord, who brought us life by his death on the cross. With our whole heart, let us ask him. By your death, raise us to life. Teacher and Savior, you have shown us your fidelity and made us a new creation by your passion. Keep us from falling again into sin. Help us to deny ourselves today and not deny those in need. May we receive this day of penance as your gift and give it back to you through works of mercy. Master our rebellious hearts and teach us generosity. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from, from evil amen lord grant us your forgiveness and set us free from our enslavement to sin we ask this through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit God forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome everyone. We're very honored to have you here with us. Uh, my name is Father John Shork, a member of the Pastors community here at uh, St. Vincent Strandy part of Catholic Theological Union in Hyde Park, Chicago. Along with me is Philip Donnell, one of our professed seminarians with us. And together we celebrate the Eucharist this day, this March 24th. It's a day of Lent, yes. It's also a day to remember St. Oscar Romero. And so our Mass today will focus a bit on his life and the, the encouragement that we have now to celebrate God's love for us in every way, even for the gift of our very life itself. So as always, we gather as people of faith. And today in this Eucharist, we pray as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Thank you. So again, the Lord brings us together, virtually for sure, as well as just the, 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 the assurance of being part of the church universal. And we thank God again for the gift of our faith, and for the opportunity to celebrate our faith in, in a special way uh, through the Holy Eucharist this day. As we begin, uh, we recall that the Lord has given us the gift of vocation. The Lord invites us to live on our vocation every day, and we do better at times. Sometimes we, we make mistakes. As we begin, let us call to mind our sinfulness, our selfishness, and once again ask God's forgiveness and love. Jesus, you are mighty God. You are the Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you are the Son of God, the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and the splendor of our loving God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. As God's family, let us pray this Lenten day. Almighty and merciful God, you brought your martyr, your bishop martyr, blessed Oscar Romero, to overcome the torments of their passion. Grant then that we who today celebrate his day of triumph, that we may remain invincible under your protection and always be loved by you, and we make our prayers always through you, Christ the Lord, who lives one God forever and ever. Amen. We now have our scripture readings for the day. A 
a reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar said, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you will not serve my God, or worship the golden statue that I set up? Be ready now to fall down and worship the statue I had made. Whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet, flute, lyre, harp, psaltery, bagpipe, and all the other musical instruments. Otherwise, you shall be instantly cast into the white hot furnace. And who is the God who can deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered King Nebuchadnezzar, There is no need for us to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, can save us from the white hot furnace and from your hands, O King, May he save us. But even if he will not, know, O king, that we will not serve your God or worship the golden statue that you set up. King Nebuchadnezzar's face became livid with utter rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times more than usual and had some of the strongest men in his army bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and cast them into the white-hot furnace. Nebuchadnezzar rose in haste and asked his nobles, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? Assuredly, O king, they answered. But, he replied, I see four men, unfettered and unhurt, walking in the fire, and the fourth looks like a son of God. Nebuchadnezzar exclaimed, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel to deliver the servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the royal command and yielded their bodies rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our ancestors, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, praiseworthy and glorious forever. Glory and praise forever. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Friends, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered Jesus, we're descendants of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say 
you will become free. Jesus answered them, Amen, amen, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. A slave does not remain in a household forever, but a son always remains. So if the son frees you, then you will truly be free. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, but you are trying to kill me because my word has no room among you. I tell you what I have seen in the Father's presence. Then do what you have heard from the Father. They answered and said to Jesus, Oh, our father is Abraham. And Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works of Abraham. But now you are trying to kill me. A man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You're doing the works of your father? So they said to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, Oh, if God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and am here. I did not come on my own, but God sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A few thoughts uh, today as we celebrate this Feast of St. Oscar Romero and as we uh, continue our, our Lenten journey. Uh, both scriptures today I find very powerful. Familiar in one sense, yes. But uh, again, powerful and, and I think fitting into the, the, the celebration of Lent, but definitely fitting into the you know, the, the life of St. Oscar Romero as well. Our first reading from the prophet Daniel tells that great story of the three young men in the super fiery furnace and how they made the, a statement of their faith that, um, well, the king thought would take their lives when he put them in that fiery furnace, and yet they survived. They thrived. And even the fourth, as was said there, looked like the Son of God walking with them, and the result was, well, the king said, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Quite a story of, uh, of, of standing up for your faith, paying the price, and glorifying God in, in the whole process as well. Our gospel selection today is from St. John's Gospel, chapter 8. And again, it's the story of Jesus and his interaction with the, the Jewish community. Some of whom believed in him, yes, but the others... <clears throat> Did not know God about it. And what we have today is, is uh, again, quite a, a dialogue there, back and forth. Jesus going back and forth about, you know, the, 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 the power of God and work in their lives, the, the life they shared in and through Abraham, and the, the, the desire that everyone be free from the slavery to sinfulness as well. I think today as well, we, we celebrate the life of the bishop, the archbishop, and the martyr, St. Oscar Romero, of El Salvador. Again, a, a 20th century witness to Jesus, to Jesus' message, his message of love and justice for a people who, who were oppressed. It happened there in the, in, in, the, in the country of El Salvador. And I think today, as we kind of celebrate his feast, it's also again in the context of, of our Lenten program that invites us to go deeper in our faith journey, to explore our faith in Jesus in a way that both supports us in everyday life, but also challenges us to make the most of that life as well. Those three young men, yes, and, and Archbishop Romero, yes, they, they all were deeply aware of their faith in God and what that faith meant on a daily basis. To be able to say yes to the invitation that God offers us daily to, to live on our faith, to say yes and to face the challenges that sometimes come along. It's happened to those three young men and it's happened for Archbishop Romero as he celebrated the Eucharist, that fateful day. Those three young men were very adamant in their faith and they said, we're not gonna serve your God, we'll, we'll, we'll suffer the consequences. And they did, they were victorious. And Archbishop Romero, again, his faith led him to to speak out on behalf of, of the poor, 
on behalf of the, uh, the injustices that he saw in society, the, the cruelty of his day with the, the murder of so many, many, many people. He was there for his people as a faithful shepherd. I think both of those young men, Archbishop Romero, are great examples of, of faith under pressure, of daily giving witness to the person of Jesus, to God's love and presence in our lives and in our world, and how central then our faith is to, to help us to make it through the, the challenges and the opportunities that are ours each and every day. I think the gospel today presents kind of a special challenge. Uh, Jesus' statement says, if if you remain in my, my words, if you follow along with me, you're going to be my disciples, you're going to know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Wow. To be full of truth and to be free. I think it's a goal for all of us as human beings. Truth and freedom. It's part of the, or the fabric of our lives here in the, in the United States of America, and yet it gets challenged day by day. We're invited to take and, and witness God's love for all of us in the person of Jesus, witnesses to Jesus' life and love. Jesus who, who frees us from the, the sin of, of selfishness and, and pride through his death, his sufferings, his death on the cross. So today we gather together for some time of prayer, yes. This celebration of the Holy Eucharist, yes. And as part of our Lenten journey. In one sense, here we are, the, the fifth week of Lent, March 24th, it's, I call it the home stretch of Lent. In just a few days, we will celebrate that sacred triduum. And hopefully, our Lenten program thus far, our, our prayer, our penance, the, the outreach, the sacrifices that we've made, hopefully that's helped us thus far to a, a metanoia, a, a change of heart that, that gives new life to our faith. Faith in God in this 21st century world. The world which needs that love of God so much as we deal with the effects of the pandemic, as we deal with the effects, the ripple effects on our economy and jobs and people just worldwide, no doubt about it. We are invited to have a stronger, more loving faith and even to maybe more boldly profess our faith, to provide a public witness to justice and love in our own day, in our part of the world, just as did St. Oscar Romero in El Salvador some 40 years ago. No doubt about it, the witness is needed. The pandemic, the fears, the violence, the injustice, the poverty continues. And we as Christians, as Catholics, we have a, a response. We're invited as we live out our vocation to, to let that response take flesh in the nitty-gritty nitty realities of, of daily life. And so today, as our, as our day unfolds, it's Jesus who encourages us through the Eucharist, as he did St. Oscar Romero. Jesus' life is to be our life. Jesus calls us to witness life, capital L, to dialogue with one another, and to help this good news be known and shared by our brothers and sisters, to give of our lives in, in love and in service and encouragement, of all of our brothers and sisters, but especially those who are most in need, as they say, the least, the last, and the lost as well. And so as did St. Oscar Romero, may we live in solidarity with our sisters and brothers, especially those most wounded by injustice and poverty. And may we give of ourselves with the strength of the Holy Eucharist, give of ourselves daily to witness the gift of freedom and life, which is now ours, as members of God's family. Let's be grateful for our faith as we live this day. Amen. Amen. And so we continue our celebration this day with our prayers of intercession. We pray first of all for the church, that God would continue to bless each of us with a deep and abiding faith, that we might truly live and witness that faith in our world today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray today too for all those who share in the sufferings of Jesus, the passion of Jesus this day, for the victims of violence and war throughout the world, 
for those who suffer because of poverty, lack of jobs, lack of home, lack of food or clothing, for those who are in any way depressed and in need of encouragement, for God's special presence to our needy brothers and sisters this day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And again, in this time of pandemic, we pray for all those who suffer because of the COVID virus, for God's special healing presence and power in their lives, that God would continue to strengthen and support those who respond, the first responders, the, the medical professionals, the research scientists, for those involved in the distribution of the vaccines. Again, for our brothers and sisters suffering because of the COVID situation, the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray today, too, for leaders, for leaders in our church, in our civil society, that God would bless these women, these men, with the qualities they need to be great leaders, and that we that too, truly might follow them in love and faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Mindful to all the people who ask us share in our prayer these Lenten days, that the people that we promise to pray for, and whatever their, their needs or their celebrations happen to be, Again, for God's special presence to each of them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pause now for a moment, and in the silence of our hearts, we bring with us the special intentions that we wish to share with the Lord during this Eucharist. For these personal intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. A loving God, we thank you again today for the great gift of life the gift of our faith, for the gift of our vocation, for the gift of this Eucharist as we celebrate the life of St. Oscar Romero. Kindly hear us in our prayer today. Hear the prayers of our brothers and sisters worldwide. We pray in confidence. We pray in your name, Jesus, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you this day. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of the water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Give with humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, our loving and almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and into our hands by the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Amen. O most merciful God, pour out your blessing upon these offerings and confirm us in the faith that blessed Oscar Romero professed by the shedding of his blood. We pray now through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, as we pray through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift, each year your faithful await the sacred Paschal feast with the joy of minds made pure. 
so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow now on your sons and daughters. Today then, with angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, Jesus opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that now that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. He gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that, by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, Together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our local bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, and religious, and the entire people you have made your own, open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. And inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Help us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church always stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember to our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. And there, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Oscar Romero and our patron saints, and, and with all the saints, we shall praise you and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Once again, as God's family, we are privileged to pray the prayer taught us by Jesus himself and prayed by so many holy people, holy men and women down through the ages. And so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yes. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. But the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but rather on the faith of your church. Graciously, grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. In our own special way, we share with one another that sign of peace. So we pray. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Jesus, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Scripture meditation for communion time is taken from St. John's Gospel, chapter 8. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life, says the Lord. So let us pray. Made new by these sacred mysteries, we pray, O Lord, that imitating the wondrous constancy of blessed Oscar Romero, we may merit an eternal reward for the suffering endured. And as always, we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So the Mass is ended. We go in peace to witness the gospel by our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining with us in our celebration of the Eucharist from our pastorist community here in Hyde Park. This is a special day for all of us as we seek to grow in our prayer during these Lenten days. And it's been a privilege to, to share the Holy Eucharist with you. May God continue to bless us as the Lenten season unfolds, especially as we move into the, the sacred triduum and, and celebrate the, the heart of our life as, as Christians. The, the gift of the Eucharist, the gift of the Lord himself on Good Friday, and the gift of the risen Lord present to us in the Easter celebration. May God bless us always. Amen. Thank you.